All right, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. And today we are going to be talking about M&Ms because there's been a lot of controversy around some pretty recent news out of the company that they will be redesigning some of the animated M&M characters a little bit to be more quote unquote progressive and inclusive for their consumers. This created controversy because obviously a lot of people were upset with the idea. They thought that it was just a marketing scheme basically to appeal to people for virtue signaling and acting as if they're more progressive than they actually are and things like that. And it seems like it sparked a little bit of a debate. In fact, M&Ms actually started trending on Twitter because of this entire situation. There was, I think, 11,000 tweets last time that I looked. And a lot of media sources are also starting to pick up on it. In fact, the article we're about to be taking a look at and reading here is from Business Insider. So here in a second, we're going to take a look at the new M&M redesigns and see what all of the fuss is actually about with this entire story. Now, these are the characters that were basically popular before, but are, I guess, getting some sort of redesign here. So the most important, I guess, changes that were even made really weren't about, you know, the colors of the M&Ms or like their faces or their personalities or anything like that. It was more or less the types of shoes that they were wearing. So apparently they're adding sneakers to a lot of this uh, to kind of, I guess, draw in the fact that people are buying sneakers a lot more often. Now, obviously, like 30, 40 years ago, sneakers weren't really as popular as they are now. You can kind of wear sneakers anytime now, and it's pretty much widely accepted. Obviously, a lot of people, myself included, also collect sneakers. They're very popular. They've, I guess, phased out other types of shoes, especially for women. I guess women have been ditching shoes like high heels a lot in recent years in favor of shoes that are, I guess, more comfortable and now more socially acceptable, like wearing, you know, tennis shoes or sneakers. But I think that this entire ad campaign has actually caused more controversy than the Mars company actually ever really anticipated. So I guess the problem with this advertising is the fact that they said they were trying to be more representative and inclusive and diverse because those have become kind of buzzwords for a lot of different types of advertising now. Like I remember they made Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head like gender neutral or something like that and a lot of people got upset about it and there was a lot of, uh, it was a big subject of debate and everything considering everything that happened. But this situation's a little bit different because I think the company actually over promised in a way what they were doing so if these are actually the final changes and these are the only things that have actually even been edited about these m&ms then there really isn't that big of a change you know when you hear something like oh we're, we were changing these pieces of candy to be more representative and inclusive it kind of plays on to the point that like i don't know you're changing one of them to be gay or something like that right because in a lot of movies and in a lot of commercials and advertising recently a big thing that a lot of companies do is they'll take like one of the characters that was originally like straight or something and they change the character and they give them like this new identity and stuff like that and this usually upsets a lot of people like i remember in the ghostbusters franchise like they made one of the movies there were all women right that was the whole thing you know it was supposed to be super inclusive and it actually made the movie bomb. The movie failed and everyone was actually really upset about the change because it was deemed unnecessary, right? And that that's kind of what's happening here, right? People are thinking that like the M&Ms are getting completely changed around and that's not really the case here, right? It seems like they're all going to retain like their personalities and stuff, but uh, Mars Wrigley, makers of the popular candy, have made subtle changes to the looks of the characters that appear in their ads, most notably replacing high heels for sneakers on one of the female characters and putting the other in a lower pair of heels. In a statement reported by CNN, Anton Vincent, president of Mars Wrigley North America, said its new look is designed to make the female characters more, quote, representative of the consumer. It's a subtle cue, he said, but it's a cue people really pick up on. Insider reached out to Mars Wrigley for further comment, but did not immediately hear back. All right, this is the part that's actually pretty confusing to me, right? So I don't know if it's just me, but I, I don't really care what type of shoes M&Ms are wearing in the commercials. Like, let me tell you what M&Ms are, right? You know, M&Ms are that good snack that after, you know, you just fucking had a smoke session with your friends or something, you can eat a whole bag of family peanut M&Ms together and feel shame. You get a little packet of M&Ms for Halloween, they're awesome, right? You get the little tube with the like fun size M&Ms, it's suddenly the greatest chocolate ever made. 
But it's not because of what type of shoes or clothes or whatever the fucking fake fictional cartoon Eminem characters are wearing, right? I, I don't know if I'm in maybe the minority of people being advertised to here, but that kind of thing just simply doesn't matter to me. I I'm really more or less about is the product decent? If M&Ms were fucking disgusting, I wouldn't eat them, and it has nothing to do with their advertising. M&Ms, you know, it's already a household name. You look at these M&Ms, and you already know what they are. Like, the characters, you already automatically identify what they are. They're that identifiable. It's a great advertising strategy, to be honest. Because if you recognize the character, you automatically recognize the product, because they are the little chocolate pieces. But they say that this is a cue that people really pick up on. I don't know, man. As a guy, right, like, they could put the yellow guy in a pair of Yeezy Boost 350s. It's not going to make me buy any more M&Ms than I already would, okay? And, like, honestly, bro, you, you could put the red M&M in an Optimus hoodie, like some like a Goyard belt on his waist, right? You could do anything, right, to cater to streetwear and, and foot appeal and whatnot. It's not going to make me buy any more M&Ms if he's wearing some, like, high-top Jordans. And it seems like what they've done is they've over-promised a little bit with the changes, and people kind of have, like, this wrong perception of what's happening here, and they think that, you know, forced diversity is getting shoved down their throat and, and whatever else they're gonna say about that so the male characters also have minor footwear changes including new laces these changes have already been rolled out online Eminem's packaging will be updated later this year CNN wrote Vincent also addressed the gender imbalance in the chocolate character lineup in a statement to CNN. There are two female characters and four male ones. Adding two new female characters is more problematic because it would mean adding two permanent colors to the mix. Instead, the company said it will give its female characters a more prominent place in the ads to give a little bit more gender balance, Vincent said, per CNN. The changes to the footwear of the female characters reflect broader societal shifts. Sales of high heels were declining at a rapid rate even before the pandemic as women increasingly favor more comfortable styles such as sneakers. Alright, this is weird to me, right? Because I, I never figured that people would really care about the fucking gender of the cartoon Eminem characters. But this is actually something up for debate. So, uh, apparently there's a problem because there's four male M&Ms, right? And there's only two female ones. But, uh, I don't know if it's just me, but the two female ones are the most memorable ones because M&Ms is trying to get everyone to fuck the, like, female M&Ms. Like, dude, if you go online, you will read some of the most vile, inhumane shit ever written by humans ever. And it's all about what they would do to the green M&M. I am even guilty of talking about the green M&M, okay? Yeah, you could say, caught Optian 4K, oh, we got Optian 4K, bro. I own it. I said that shit. I said it years ago. You're telling me that this is not the most memorable Eminem, right? Like, the yellow one's kind of dumb. Maybe you can pick up on that, I guess. But, dude, the female ones are already the most memorable ones. So, I guess, really, it doesn't hurt their strategy because, well, they're already the two most memorable ones. Might as well show them off more. But, honestly, man, this just doesn't seem that important. So, uh, it, it is a little bit of a shorter video here, but I think the point is across, you know? Uh, I don't understand exactly why this is such a big deal. Mars probably did more hurt than good by kind of saying they were doing all these things that, in reality... They didn't even do that much. So with that being said, man, I want to read your guys' comments down below. Are you mad that M&Ms are, are changing the shoes of the characters? Do you think the green M&M is hot? Let me know about it all down below. Thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like. Subscribe if you're brand new around here on the channel. Follow me over on Twitter and Twitch at SubtheOptimus. Make sure to check out ShopOpti down below. And until my next video, guys, this is Optimus Well, talking about that green M&M and signing out.